give everyone official good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining this webinar on the subject of jumpstarting CMMC in 2022. I'm Joe Guarini, project manager with Peters and Associates. I'm also one of about 1,900 registered practitioners in CMMC and have received the training required to provide accurate guidance in this field and also help others understand all that's involved with CMMC. Uh, so before we continue, one of the things that I'm going to do is actually turn on my camera here. There we go. Um, and throughout the presentation, if people have any questions, on the Teams client, there's a chat button. Looks like a little chat bubble. You can click on that and ask questions uh, at any point during the presentation. And as I have some pause points, we might get to some of those questions. There's also a raise hand uh, button just to the right of that chat button. It shows a little happy face with a hand. Feel free to click on that if there's any pressing questions. Okay, so having said all that, uh, quite a bit has changed uh, with CMMC since our last webinar on the subject in September. So let's get started and take a look at our agenda here. Okay, so CMMC as it currently is and CMMC 2.0, we're gonna go over what's changed. Um, there's some changes uh, in regards to audits as well. So we're gonna consider those and also talk about the roadmap to certification changes on top of all that. Uh, we're also gonna go through some CMMC requirements um, and find out um, different things that you can do in your environment to address those requirements to give you some good examples and talk briefly also about our compliance manager tool that we use uh, to help guide people through the certification process. Okay, with all that, um, we're gonna go into very briefly, what is CMMC? Um, for those who are new to the topic, uh, CMMC stands for the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. And it's a security framework intended to standardize cybersecurity practices to better protect information exchange with the Department of Defense, the DOD. So implementation of CMMC was deemed critical as the need to further secure the DOD supply chain continues to increase. And the whole idea is to instill a higher degree of accountability. That's the whole point, okay? So since the protection of confidential government and military data is at stake, there's a lot of tension here, and rightly so. So um, over time, security shortcomings were noticed and it's allowed for a larger influx of attacks. And cyber attackers are just always gonna be getting smarter and smarter um, and they're getting better at being able to identify uh, their targets. In other words, even if it's a small company and not just the gigantic companies like you know, Lockheed Martin or people like them, they're also targeting now smaller companies as they're able to identify who's contracting with the DOD. And I think the, the latest stat I heard was uh, about $60 billion worth of data is lost every year from this type of data robbery where they're able to get in uh, after learning about who's contracting with the DOD. So when it comes to CMMC, who does it pertain to? Who's affected? Well, really anyone who does business with the Department of Defense and the supply chain. Whether you contract with the Department of Defense for providing something as simple as silverware or um, a key component to like a weapons guidance system, you're still going to need that certification. And that Department of Defense supply chain uh, includes over 300,000 companies in total, so quite a large amount of companies. And it's going to be a hot topic for quite a while. So uh, here's some interesting statistics. 30%, sorry, 34% of all documented cyber attacks targeted manufacturers. Small businesses are the target of about 43% of cyber attacks. And three out of four small to medium-sized businesses say they don't have sufficient personnel to address IT security. So the need is real. And so CMMC is meant to address all that. So um, something I do want to also make clear before we get into CMMC 2.0 is that CMMC is not a law, okay? Uh, HIPAA is a law, okay? If you violate HIPAA, that's law related. CMMC is not the law, it's a framework. However, there is something called the False Claims Act, which I would be remiss if I didn't go into. Um, falsifying evidence or misrepresenting compliance can lead to being sued for breach of contract, being banned from future contracts with the DOD, and potentially uh, financial damages up to three times the contract value. So um, Department of Justice obtained, <laughs> I've written down here, more than $3 billion in settlements and judgments due to false claims in just 2019 alone. So 
it's a big deal. There's also benefits to whistleblowers. Uh, they get between 15 and 30% of the award um, as a result of that. So certainly being honest about where you're at is to everyone's best interest. Okay, um, so this was something that we've been showing uh, and something that was initially announced back in maybe two years ago, right? In January 2020, when CMMC was first announced of what that rollout would be for the number of contracts that would require CMMC certification over time. The goal would be that by 2025, um, all of that would be enforced, okay? That is not the case anymore. So a couple of months ago in early November, the Department of Defense announced the new CMMC 2.0 framework. And there were aspects of the original CMMC 1.0 framework that they felt needed to be changed. So just as quickly as CMMC arrived, now there's changes already. Um, part of the reason for the changes, just part, had to do with actually a scandal within the Department of Defense staff. Uh, the Department of Defense Inspector General became under an investigation as a part of all this. And I think even as last Friday, as early as last Friday, January 14th, it was reported that the Department of Defense Inspector General was sentenced to seven and a half years for accepting bribes and defrauding the United States. So that was in relation to a contract or multiple contracts that they were overseeing. So all of that business has been delaying CMMC. Okay, so some other factors went into CMMC 2.0 as well, having to do primarily with making things more simplified for the contractors. Okay, so that's to our benefit. Currently, uh, CMMC has five different maturity model levels, which you can see on the left side of the slide here. And with CMMC 2.0, there will be only three maturity levels. So on the right side, you'll see levels three, two, and one. Okay, so they realized that it didn't make a whole lot of sense to have levels two and four in the mix since no contracts were ever going to require them anyway. The Department of Defense contracts today um, only require levels one, three, or five. Okay, so levels two and four were just there previously or originally just to show incremental progress along the way, to show that you're on the way to three, you're on the way to five. So for CMMC 2.0, what's currently being called level three will soon be called level two. So it's currently being called level five, will soon be called level three, okay? There's a little slide showing the changes here. The current CMMC level three requirements included all of the NIST 800-171 controls, so about 110 different requirements. And then the CMMC said, you know, that's not good enough, let's add 20 more. So the CMMC accreditation board made it 130 total requirements, okay? Once CMMC 2.0 takes effect, level three, which will be called eventually level two, the requirements will mirror, will mirror exactly what the requirements are for NIST 800-171, which is only the 110, okay? Level two will not include those 20 additional requirements, making it easier actually for organizations to become certified at that level. That's a good thing. Um, so in addition to maturity level changes, there's also changes in the certification roadmap. Okay, so here's a very busy slide. We're not going to go through it in detail. However, it details the different steps along the way on the roadmap to becoming certified. You would be going through an assessment, a pre-assessment prep. You would be able to identify the gaps and then hire a C3PAO, which stands for a Certified Third Party Assessor Organization that would conduct the audit, 90-day compliance uh, remediation gap, and then the actual CMMC accreditation board would approve, and then you would be certified. A little bit different now. Um, so currently with CMMC 1.0, those seeking a level one certification will need to implement all 17 controls and pass every single requirement 100%. Organizations seeking certification at any maturity level currently are required to hire that certified third-party assessor organization for the audit. And so, What's the difference with 2.0? Well, with 2.0, organizations seeking a level one cert do not need to hire an auditor. They do not need to hire a certified third-party assessor organization. They can, and they are allowed to, self-assess and submit a self-attestation, okay? So level one requirements will no longer be pass-fail. Organizations will score themselves 
and just like those who are subject to the uh, the DFARS interim rule, same exact thing, right? Whatever score they get, they're going to need to submit that to the Navy's website called the SPRS, called the Supplier Performance Risk System. So once the scoring is finished, those organizations seeking a level one cert will need to also do something they haven't done before, and that's called uh, submitting POAMs, okay? Uh, POAMs with firm deadlines attached to them as well. And what's a POAM? So POAM is uh, P-O-A-N-M, stands for Plan of Action and Milestones document, okay? So what it is, is it details how the organization plans to remediate the requirements that failed to score in the self-assessment, okay? And those POAMs would be due six months after their self-assessment is complete, okay? So when receiving the CMMC 2.0 level one certification, that would be good for three years, okay? That certification is good. You'll have that for three years and participate in those contracts that require um, at most a level one certification. However, it will be a requirement for um, those level one certified organizations to self-assess and submit their score every single year and be subject to an audit at any time from the CMMC accreditation board and be subject, subject to the False Claims Act as well, if that applies. So if companies seeking a level one decide to hire a C3PAO auditor, even though they don't need to, because they can self-assess, if they do hire an auditor, those companies will not need to conduct that annual self-assessment every single year in that process, you know, which that process includes, you know, management signing a legal document, um, attestation document, and keeping it on record, okay? So there's some choices and options there. Uh, the new CMMC 2.0 plan was designed, of course, to help organizations seeking a level one cert to save on the entire process, okay, money, you know, because if you're saving on auditing costs, you know, that helps you and it speeds things along. Uh, additionally, it was announced that under the 2.0 framework, organizations seeking a level two certification, which is now called a level three, some of those organizations will also be allowed to self-assess as well to help speed the process along. And then, so here's the question, right? You know, how, how do we know which organizations seeking a level two uh, will be allowed to self-assess and which ones will be required to hire an auditor? Um, the answer is, drum roll, um, we don't know. We, we don't know yet. Uh, we'll continue to keep our ear to the ground for that announcement, but we're told that if there's an expedited need, um, there will be no uh, need for an actual um, audit-based um, certification for level two. And so hopefully more information on that soon. So what about level three? Uh, for CMMC 2.0, level three certification, which is today level five, the highest level, requirements will also be adhering very closely to the NIST controls, okay? So it'll be all the ones from 171 plus an additional subset from 800-172, all right? So for level three, organizations will need to engage absolutely a, a C3PAO auditor, okay? Can't get around that. Um, so currently, the CMMC 1.0 framework is still in effect, okay, which currently requires companies seeking even a level one cert to hire a C3PAO uh, to conduct an audit. However, um, only just recently were the first C3PAOs given authorization to start their audits with companies, okay, it's still pretty new. And since there's only a few of those C3PAOs that are authorized, as you can imagine, they're very backlogged. Um, with all the work they're doing to help people go through these assessments and audits. And all the companies that I've called so far um, who are seeking to become those C3PAO auditors, uh, they said that they don't really know how long it'll take before they receive their authorization to conduct those audits. And they really aren't revealing how much they're going to charge at this point either, because that's something that would be good to know. Um, however, I have heard another um, uh, presentations on this topic for those already in the industry, they've heard that CMMC 2.0 level two audits could cost around $80,000. Um, so it really would be quite the cost savings to be able to self-assess, of course. Uh, so after the CMMC 2.0 uh, framework was announced, the glaring questions became all around this one question. You know, is how long 
until CMMC 2.0 takes effect. When is this going to all, you know, be enforced? And of course, there's no date for that yet. However, on their website, uh, and also the industry's best guess as to when the framework will be enforced is another eight or nine to 24 months. So maybe up to two years, maybe as soon as eight or nine months from now, while the new framework details are being finalized, okay? Um, it's also estimated that the Department of Defense is pushing back the dates on when they'll have more contracts require CMMC certifications. In fact, as I understand, at this point in time, since CMMC 2.0 was announced, no contracts will be requiring uh, CMMC certifications yet, okay, until it's put in place, 2.0. So it could be well over a year before new contracts start requiring CMMC certs, but since implementation of the maturity level controls takes companies such a significant amount of time, organizations still are not waiting to begin their preparations. Okay, uh, before we move on, I wanted to pause and find out if there's any questions. So Nora, do you know if there's any questions in the chat or anyone who has any questions on what we've covered so far? I don't see any questions. OK, I know it's a lot <laughs> all at once, but if one comes to anybody, don't oh, be shy, feel free to ask. One is being typed right now. OK, we'll give them a minute. Yeah, the exact date when um, 2.0 was announced, I believe it was November 4th or 14th. So just a couple months ago, it's all pretty new. But people can always go to the uh, their website to also get the latest information as well in case something changes. All right. Is Peters and Associates looking to be a C3PAO? Good question. Um, we are continuing to be more of what you would call an RPO or registered practitioner organization, which we are not yet. I am a registered practitioner. However, something that we will not be involved in is um, the actual audit process. And I feel like there is also a separation that needs to be there as well um, between people who are prepping folks for an assessment and those doing the audits, as we couldn't be both. Does that make sense? We got one more question. Mm -hmm. CMMC, how does self attestation work? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. No, well, that's fine. What work yeah. does Peters do to get ready for this? Right. Yeah, as a part of the um, the preparation process, the assessment prep, uh, we're helping organizations uh, prepare their uh, POAMs, which the compliance management tool helps to facilitate, which we'll cover later in the presentation. And the self-attestation is almost exactly the same as what those who are subject to the DFARS interim rule do, which is just a legal document, very simple, that simply has a name attached to it, typically, uh, um, CSO or some um, person who's going to say, I attest to the um, level of security that we are claiming. And that way they know um, where that accountability lies. So it's a responsible position and it's something that's just a simple document to have on hand that has a name attached to it and the claim of what level of security is there. And uh, there's templates everywhere for that, but we would help to facilitate that as well. There's one more that's typing. Sure. Oh, never mind. OK. <laughs> All right, we'll continue. Um, so something I'm going to show on my screen is an Excel spreadsheet, which can be downloaded from this link, which you know might be hard to scribble down. But if you just simply Google Microsoft product placement, excuse me, placemat for CMMC, you'll see this document here. Um, it's a very busy document. I understand that the resolution may be too small for most people to see, but at least from a high level, people can get a sense of what this document's doing as I describe it. Um, on the left-hand side, there is a few columns, A through D, which show different tool sets that Microsoft uh, provides. Of course, for those who aren't Microsoft soft shop people, this might apply less to you, but it's a good example that shows which CMMC requirements are covered based on what tool set you apply. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so for example, in row 39 here, um, there's a tool set called Microsoft Defender for Office 365. If I click on yes, things changed on the right-hand side. 
Um, so things in gold are requirements. And again, this is for level three, which will be called level two later. So there's 120, sorry, sorry, 110 different requirements here. And it shows you in gold if it's partially met. And blue shows if that requirement is fully met by that tool. So for example, for this in blue here, which is SI.3.218, what's the requirement? Employ spam protection mechanisms at information system access entry and exit points. So spam protection, okay, that makes sense. Microsoft Defender, the tool we clicked on for Office 365, what that does is it does attachment scanning, it does uh, safe link protection, impersonation protection, anti-phishing. Um, and so let's also look at this other blue one, SI.3.220, and these are numbers that uh, relate specifically to that requirement under the domain at this point, SI, which is System and Information Integrity. 220 says, utilize email sandboxing to detect or block potentially malicious email. And it's in blue, which means it's met with that Microsoft Defender for Office 365 product. And that is one of the things that it does. It looks at the emails that come in and it looks at the as attachment to that email and it opens it in a sandbox environment before it gets to you to validate that it's not a malicious attachment. Okay, so that's one example. Uh, let's look at another one here. Uh, so how about Microsoft Information Protection? All right, so for this one, one of the things that it's addressing is access control requirement 2.016. All right, well, let's look that one up here. C.2. That's 016. I need a magnifying glass. <laughs> the description is control the flow of CUI data. Okay, so, so controlled unclassified information in accordance with approved authorizations. Well, how do you control the flow of government related information? Well, the tool we clicked on was Microsoft Information Protection. And what does that do? It protects your data with sensitivity labels. You can tag things and label certain pieces of information that you know are government related and apply policies to those. Uh, you can apply double key encryption to those in addition to data loss prevention policies. So people aren't just email, able to email out uh, government related information once it's labeled appropriately. So that's a cool product. And we'll just look at one more. Uh, Microsoft Defender for Identity. <clears throat> Click on yes. And we'll see here it's meeting a lot of requirements. Um, completely re meeting this requirement here, IA 3.086. So we'll quickly look at this before we move on. Okay, so this requirement IA 3.086 says disable identities after a defined period of inactivity. So something that uh, it's, it's talking about here is, hey, if there's an identity or a username or an account that is not had any activity in it and not being used, but it's still enabled, that's a potential problem. And that's something that Microsoft Defender for Identity would be able to identify. Um, Microsoft Defender for Identity, one of the things it does that works with your Active Directory and then evaluates a baseline of what normal user behavior is for an account. Uh, so people are logging in from different locations around the country um, or if they are logging in through only certain hours of the night, it, get that baseline of what normal behavior is and then identify if there's an outlier. Um, in addition to uh, calling out if there's uh, lateral path movements uh, that are exposed that you can identify those as well. So certainly this would meet that requirement, identifying accounts that are you know, still enabled but have no activity and it seems suspicious, okay? So that's just a little interesting tool that's out there from Microsoft that shows how specific requirements are met based on certain tool sets or certain configurations. And of course, I, I should mention that Peters and Associates can help people apply those tools that I called out and more. Joe. I want to yes. um, who wants to have a CMMC party at the Peters headquarters? <laughs> <laughs> Was that one of the questions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I'll get an evite ready. 
<laughs> okay. All right, well, let's talk quickly about the Rapid Fire Compliance Manager tool. Uh, we've mentioned this in the previous uh, presentations as well, so I won't go too much in depth here. Uh, but essentially, uh, the Rapid Fire Compliance Manager tool helps people to streamline the assessment prep process, and that's the whole idea. Okay, it's a guided questionnaire um, along with an inventory scan so that people, because you're required to have a whole inventory of what your current um, devices are. So that's servers, that's uh, company mobile devices, that's laptops, everything. And you would have to type it in manually unless you have some kind of a tool like this uh, with IP addresses, you know, whether or not it handles UI data, who has access to it in this tool. Uh, that's built in, looks at the environment, and then collects all of that and organizes it for you, which is great. Um, and at the very end, this tool generates records for compliance, evidence of compliance, which is wonderful for an auditor or for self-attestation. And you can also see the maturity level controls that we're, the organization is working to comply with, um, which were uh, compliance wins, which ones were compliance gaps, and be able to generate those POAMs, okay, the progress and milestones documents. Okay, uh, and just as a little peek into that tool, um, this is what it looks like. Um, they are listed as to-do tasks. You can see them on the right-hand side as they get complete. They get marked as complete and it shows you the date, um, who worked on them. It's also a role-based workflow, meaning you don't have to do everything yourself. You can assign specific tasks to certain individuals. Uh, as you click on add user for a subject matter expert or technician, um, to that email address, they'll receive an email as an invite, work on that task, and then be able to proceed with your assessment prep. And this is one of the reports that come out, one of them, and it shows, you know, for example, what's in red, in compliance, red, no. Okay, well, now you know what to firm up. And then once you feel like it's all green and uh, the reports look good, then you can submit your score or get a auditor involved. So, one way that we can help as Peters and Associates, uh, we have a fixed fee offering to help organizations with CMMC CERT uh, assessment preps, and it's a guidance role in this process where I can help clarify the requirements for folks and interpret the jargon and explain what acceptable evidence criteria is for the controls, okay? Uh, and since we would own and manage that compliance manager product for customers, we would provide everyone with access that they need for the tool and help facilitate the evidence gathering component. Um, with that customized CMMC web portal, which is pretty cool. So at the end of the engagement, customers would have that compliance document and understand where the gaps, if there are any, where they may exist and how to address them, okay? Uh, so for um, next steps, I can speak to any interested companies and further explain our process. Otherwise, I think we've got maybe just a minute or so left for any additional questions, if there are any. Got one coming. Okay. Are you engaged in level two CMMCs with organizations? Um, right now, I would say uh, level threes and ones is what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing level twos yet. Uh, there are some companies that um, have maybe talked about interest in level two, but ultimately people are going after level ones and threes. And of course that level three will soon be called level two, <laughs> uh, but that's what I'm seeing so far. Any other little, questions? We have a little back and forth in the comments. Someone responded back to Bruce if he meant CMMC um, level one or level two. Let's see what Bruce said. Oh, you can see it. There we go. Oh, yes. I see Bruce's comment here. 2.0 level two. So yes. <laughs> the answer. So yes. We are seeing a lot of people gearing up for um, level three assessments. And some people who are also interested in level three assessments um, are sometimes only uh, starting with a level one. 
fix the engagement uh, to get started just because, you know, there could very well be that there's a lot of remediations that come out of just that. And what's nice is after a level one engagement, uh, you can piggyback on that and use the same information within the compliance manager tool to build to higher levels of maturity level. So I hope that information helps. All right, well, if there's any other questions, uh, feel free to type now. Otherwise, um, feel free to email and we'll be able to help and assist. Thank you for everyone's time.